Ladies, gentlemen and brethren, we greet you from the Grand Lodge of South Africa and we welcome you to the installation ceremony of our Grand Master-elect, Right Worship Brother John Smith, OSM, MSA. The Grand Lodge will be formally opened and then placed at ease to enable the recording of the installation ceremony to take place. After the installation ceremony, the Grand Lodge will be formally closed. The Khuruhup Lodge was formed in 1772 and is in fact the oldest acting Masonic Lodge in the Southern Hemisphere. In 1802 this temple was consecrated and that is similarly the oldest active Masonic temple in the Southern Hemisphere. It plays a very special part in our history and certainly it plays a very special part in the history of South Africa. So it's a real pleasure to be able to tell you more about it. When we look at the lodge, the lodge was founded at the time when there were only 1,000 houses in the whole country. And the temple which we are touring today is on the, on the same grounds as the Houses of Parliament, but they in fact were built some years afterwards and the first parliament was actually held in the boardroom of the Kuruhu Temple. The, the key players in the building of the temple and that was um, Tibolt who was the architect and I heard described earlier today as the greatest architect in the history of South Africa. Anton Anreeth, who was the sculptor and the builder was Skutta. This particular statue is called the figure of silence which many of you will be familiar with um, and that in fact is an original Anreeth. It's, a, it's very beautiful and it's, um, it's typical of the type of work he did. And if you have a look at it, you'll find that it's actually secured to the wall because by the nature of the material used, it would crumble if it wasn't. I think let's go across and have a look at a couple of other Andreeds. This is all part of the original temple and the, this door, this beautiful door, is typical of the type of materials that they used in the day. I mean, look at the width of it. It's solid wood. It's absolutely beautiful. And here, this is what, um, what we term the, the Chamber of Meditation. And the statue that you see here is the slain Hiram Abiff. If you go into researching Freemasonry, he's a very prominent player. And we've made all sorts of stories about Hiram Abiff. And the middle chamber is, is also a very special place. This is also part of the original building. So this goes right back to 1802 and the Statue in the background is the figure of grief. You will be able to see it, a mother consoling her child after the loss of the husband. And that is the, the last of the Anreeths that still exists in our temple. The, this is the original entrance area. And if you notice, it's got a very interesting stippled effect on the walls. And we were confused about that for many years. We weren't sure what it was all about. and then. Fairly recently we had an architectural student come in and he pointed out that it was, um, it was to depict the lead of the temple. It was supposed to be foliage, it was all painted green and brown and it was created an effect of this being an outside area. In fact they painted the roof blue and it made it a very interesting area. The Honours Board of Lodge de Khuruhup itself goes back as you will see to 1772. If you go through it, if you go through the names on there, you will see some more than interesting people. I should point out incidentally that the main temple is not the way it was originally. There was a major fire in 1892 and it destroyed the main temple. What we've seen so far with regard to the outside areas were right back to 1802 in the original construction. But the main temple was reconstructed after the fire. The main temple itself is an interesting shape for a Masonic temple. It's long, it's narrow, um, but it's, it's based on the exact dimensions of the inner sanctum of King Solomon's temple in Jerusalem. The temple itself, as you will see, is laid out in the um, Netherlandic type pattern with the warden sitting at the west and the master's chair in the east. Around the walls of the temple, we have three statues and these were imported to replace the statues that were destroyed in the fire. They are, they are all symbolizing wisdom, strength, and beauty. The first one is the, the representation of beauty, and that in fact is the Gibson's Venus. The original of that is found in Birmingham in England, and it is the first ever tinted marble statue. 
So if you have a look at the original, it wasn't white, it's actually, um, it's painted marble, um, and she's holding an extremely bright red apple, and she's got a very bright red pair of lips. In the east, we have the other two statues that were imported from England, and the one on the right-hand side is the statue of Hercules, that's the Lansdowne Hercules, and he is now found in the Getty Museum in California. Um, there, was, there were all sorts of stories about how he got there and there was uh, rumors about Getty having had a relationship with the Nazis and they gave it to him as a present. Um, but quite honestly, I'm not too sure about that. But that's where you will find it today. That's the Lansdowne Hercules. And he, of course, denotes strength. And then the final one is the Statue of Wisdom, which is depicted by the Giovannini Minerva, or the statue of Athena, the goddess of a wide variety of things, including wisdom. She was also the goddess of war. She was the goddess of pottery. She had the most incredible range of things that she was a goddess of. But she is our depiction of, of, uh, of wisdom. The Worshipful Master is situated in the east and in fact we go around it and I'm, I'm not going to take you on all the detail now but if you go around it you will find that virtually all of the furniture was donated by the brethren immediately after the fire and you'll find their names on the back of the different pieces and so on but that in itself is actually very interesting the ceiling is to depict the the night sky and this one is in fact fairly new the, it is a suspended canvas. The original one had reached a point where it perished and split and was, it was unfortunately beyond repair. Um, this one has been put in its place and we're also thrilled to bits with it. It's very beautiful. And then the final statue. This is a statue of hope. All right, it's a local statue. The others were imported from overseas, but they had a space, and somewhere along the line, they put in the Statue of Hope. Um, it's, it was done in Cape Town. It's produced by a Cape Town sculptor, and we actually don't know who did it. We, we just don't have any records of that. Um, but nonetheless, it would have been shortly after the others, and also plays a very real part in our history and in our symbolism. Now, Hope, hope um, holds the anchor, and you'll see all around the place. And in fact, she appears in various... Um, various places around Cape Town and around the area and even the, the fountain outside in the garden has got a figure of hope in the middle of it. So she has two depictions in the complex. Masonic symbolism is included all over the place. The checkered floor for instance. Um, in some temples you will find that they put a carpet in the middle with, uh, with the checkered floor on it. We don't. The whole temple floor depicts the, the uh, symbolism of Freemasonry, which says that, um, that every man has a role to play in the world and that each one has to fit in as he, best, as he is best suited. So if we look at the floor, we have black tiles and white tiles, we have triangular tiles. Each one of them is perfect in its own right and they have to be combined to make the perfect whole, which is, is symbolized by the floor that we have. There are many more symbols of this type that we could explore, but our time today has unfortunately come to an end. And I just want you to know how much we've enjoyed spending the time with you. And we sincerely trust that you found it of value and that it's inspired you to come and spend more time with us again in the future. Thank you for joining us. The volume of the sacred law which the Grand Lodge will use today and on which the Grand Master elect will take his obligation is the Smith family Bible which his late father 
who was also a Freemason, acquired when our Grandmaster was a young boy. To comply with the COVID regulations, each Grand Lodge officer has been given his own personal volume of the sacred law, which has been inscribed and signed by the Grand Master-elect. The installing officer will further present the newly installed Grand Master with his own personal gavel. The first hymn, titled Wisdom, Strength and Beauty, was written by Brother C. Fred Silberbauer in 1911. He was a member of Lodge de Kuruhuop and its orator for many years. He wrote the lyrics to fit the music by Stuttgart and adopted for the hymn Earth Has Many a Noble City. The members of the Grand Lodge of South Africa sing this hymn at the commencement of all installation ceremonies. As the COVID restrictions prevent us from singing in the Lodge today, Worship Brother Kurbus Wilson, a member of Lodge de Kuruhuop, has pre-recorded this hymn and the others as solos. Brethren, we have met here today to install the Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of South Africa. As we will strictly comply with the government regulations related to the COVID pandemic, we will not wear gloves during the ceremony and we will sanitize our hands as often as may be necessary. We will also only remove our masks when it is essential and safe to do so. Very worshipful Grand Master of Ceremony, Please conduct Right Worshipful Brother Alan van der Feyfer to the West to read the ancient charges. Right Worshipful Brother van der Feyfer, please assemble. The ancient charges. Since 1772, Freemasons in South Africa have practiced the ancient charges. Since 1961, the Grand Lodge of South Africa insists on the following. A firm and irrevocable belief in a supreme being. The Holy Bible or such similar book, depending on the individual faith of every member, referred to by Freemasons as the volume of the sacred law shall always be open in every lodge when it is at labor. The three great lights of Freemasonry, being the volume of the sacred law, the square and the compasses, shall be exhibited in every lodge when it is at labor. Every Freemason is forbidden to act in any manner which may subvert the peace or good order of any lodge 
a provincial Grand Lodge or the Grand Lodge itself. Every Freemason is forbidden to discuss or advance his views on religion or politics at any Masonic meeting. The Grand Lodge acknowledges the equality of all persons, the universal brotherhood of man, and every man's duty to labor for the welfare of the community. The Grand Lodge shall not express any opinion on foreign or domestic state policy. The Grand Lodge shall have no Masonic relationship with any bodies which do not adhere to these basic principles. There is no secret regarding any basic principles of Freemasonry. The Grand Lodge is a sovereign and independent body and shall have sovereign jurisdiction over all lodges under its control. The membership of the Grand Lodge shall be composed exclusively of men. Very Worshipful Grand Master of Ceremony, please conduct Right Worshipful Brother Alan van der Pfeiffer back to his seat in the East. Very Worshipful Grand Master of Ceremonies, please conduct Right Worshipful Brother Brandon Topham to the West to deliver his report. Right Worshipful Brother Topham, please assemble. Most Worshipful Past Grand Master, I am able to report that the Grand Conclave of the Grand Lodge of South Africa was duly constituted via secure web or a video link on Saturday the 9th of May in the Year of the Light 6020. I am further able to report that the proceedings of the Grand Conclave were conducted in harmony and peace and the members thereof elected Right Worshipful Brother John Ewald Henry Smith, OSM, MSA, to the office of Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of South Africa. Thank you for that report. Very Worshipful Brother Master of Ceremony, please conduct Right Worshipful Brother Brandon Toppen back to his seat in the East. Very Worshipful Grand Master of Ceremony, please conduct Right Worshipful Brother Avron Jacobson, MSA, to the West to read the letters patent of the Grand Master elect. Right Worshipful Brother ja uh, Jacobson, please assemble. Grand Lodge of South Africa, Letters Patent. In the name of the great architect of the universe, we, the members of the Grand Committee of the Grand Lodge of South Africa, being Most Wishful Brother G. Edwards, OSM, Most Wishful Brother D. Duncan, OSM, Right Wishful Brother B. Topham, Right Wishful Brother E. Bronner, Right Wishful Brother A. Jacobson, MSA, Right Wishful Brother A. Van der Pfeiffer, 
Right Worship Brother T. Hardiman, Right Worship Brother G. Place, Right Worship Brother F. Uppelcrane, Right Worship Brother B. De Kock, Right Worship Brother K. Hutton, Right Worship Brother B. Rousseau, OSM, Right Worship Brother J. Brits, Right Worship Brother R. Smith, Right Worship Brother J. Markentonis, Right Worship Brother J. Miller, Right Worship Brother V. Mellenbeck, Right Worship Brother P. Ruth, and Right Worship Brother A. Duplessis, do hereby make known that we reposing full confidence in Most Worshipful Brother John Evolt Henry Smith, OSM, MSA, hereby declare that upon taking the obligation of pay, appertaining to the office of Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of South Africa and being duly installed therein, he shall stand possessed of all such powers, rights and privileges as the constitution, laws and regulations of the Grand Lodge prescribes and as the rules, usages and customs of the craft of Freemasonry are known to belong to the office, requiring him to obey all such statutes at he, as he may encounter in the discharge of all his duties and actions by virtue of such office. We further hereby recommend him to all the members of the Grand Lodge of South Africa, and we charge him to pay due obedience to him. Signed on behalf of the Grand Committee and given under the seal of the Grand Lodge of South Africa in Cape Town on this fifth day of December, AL 2020 AD, I apologize, AL 620 AD 2020. Signed by Most Worshipful Brother G. Edwards, OSM, Grand Secretary, Most Worshipful Brother D. Duncan, OSM, Immediate Past Grandmaster. Right Worshipful Brother Avron Jacobson, MSA, thank you for that communication, which will receive my immediate attention. Very Worshipful Grandmaster of Ceremony, please conduct Right Worshipful Brother Avron Jacobson, MSA, back to his seat in the east. Brethren, let us now continue our proceedings with prayer. Brethren all, please stand and adopt the sign of reverence. Very worshipful Grand Orator, please proceed. Grant we beseech thee, great architect of the universe, thy blessing upon him who is about to be obligated and invested as the Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of South Africa. Bless him with wisdom to design, strength to execute, and beauty to adorn, which may tend to further the lasting interests of Freemasonry. We also ask thee to bless and prosper in their several advocations, the officers of this Grand Lodge, and grant that they may discharge the duties to commit it to them with zeal and devotion, and that they will be examples to the members of this Grand Lodge in the practice of every Masonic virtue. Finally, we pray that the spirit of unity, peace and concord may ever rest upon and characterize all their labors and may all their works begun, continued in thee, ever redound to thy eternal glory. So mote it be. So mote it be. Brethren, you may discharge the sign of reverence. Brethren, please be seated. Very worshipful Grand Master of Ceremony. Please conduct the Grand Master elect and the regalia bearer, Brother Stephen Smith, from the temple. We will await your return. Grand Master elect, please take up your position.
Brethren, I will now read out the names of the escort of honor. Please stand when your name is read. Very worshipful Grand Master of Ceremony, please assist me to assemble the escort of honor as is known to you. Right Worshipful Brother Brandon Topham, Deputy Grand Master and Presenting Officer. Right Worshipful Brother Ernest Bronner, Assistant Grand Master. Right Worshipful Brother Avron Jacobson, MSA, Assistant Grand Master. Right Worshipful Brother Alan van der Pfeiffer, Assistant Grand Master. Right Worshipful Brother Victor Muhlenbeck, Assistant Past Assistant Grand Master. Right Worshipful Brother Thomas Hardiman, Provincial Grand Master, Southern Division. Right Worshipful Brother Godfrey Place, Provincial Grand Master, Northern Division. Right Worshipful Brother Franz Appelgrain, Provincial Grand Master, Central Division. Right Worshipful Brother Keith Hutton, Provincial Grand Master, Eastern Cape Division. The escort of honor you will assemble in the north and south column as is known to you, facing inwards. Please assemble. Very worshipful Grand Master of Ceremony, please conduct the Grand Master elect and the regalia bearer into the temple. Most Worshipful Past Grand Master, there is a report. Worshipful Grand Inner Guard, see who seeks admission. Who seeks admission? The Grand Master elect seeks admission. Wait while I report to the Past Grand Master. Most Worshipful Past Grand Master, the Grand Master elect seeks admission. Brethren, please stand. Worshipful Grand Inner Guard, Open the temple doors wide and admit the Grand Master elect and the regalia bearer. Brethren, with the exception of the, esco the uh, escort of honor and the Grand Master of Ceremony, please be seated. Brethren of the escort of honor, please face the east and adopt the sign of reverence. Most worshipful past Grand Master, I present to you Right Worshipful Brother John Evald Henry Smith, OSM, MSA, the Grand Master elect of the Grand Lodge of South Africa, for his installation into such office by you. Right Worshipful Brother Topham, thank you for that presentation, which I will attend to in due course. Grand Master elect and the brethren of the escort of honor, you are released from standing with the sign of reverence. Grand Master elect. Having been elected to the office of Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of South Africa, 
you cannot be insensible to the obligation which you are about to take or to your responsibility for the faithful discharge of the duties attached to this high office. The honour, reputation, growth and relevance of this Grand Lodge will depend upon the skill and assiduity with which you govern its affairs, while the happiness of its members will depend upon the zeal and devotion with which you promote the principles of our order. It is further your duty to promote proper Masonic instruction to all the members of this Grand Lodge and to oppress upon them the importance for their daily well-being so that they may be amiably and discreetly regulate their conduct in such a manner that it will show the world this happy and beneficial effects of our ancient and honourable institution. By such conduct, the uninitiated will surely know that it is to the Freemason that he may unburden his troubled heart and turn to for justice and relief. I sincerely trust that the great architect of the universe will bless you with good health and the required strength to perform these duties to the satisfaction of yourself and to the benefit and advantage of the Grand Lodge of South Africa. So mote it be. Very worshipful Grand Master of Ceremony, please conduct the Grand Master elect to the altar to take his obligation. <laughs> Brethren, please stand and adopt the sign of reverence. Grand Master Elect, please kneel on both knees and place both your hands on the volume of sacred law. Listen attentively to the following prayer for your spiritual guidance and support during your year of office, your term of office. Make me a channel of your Right Worshipful Brother John Eobalt Henry Smith, OSM, MSA, Grand Master Elect, recite your obligation. I, John Eobalt Henry Smith, in the name of the great architect of the universe and in the presence of this Grand Lodge regularly assembled, do hereby renew my vows of allegiance to the Grand Lodge of South Africa and solemnly promise that I will pay due obedience to its constitution, laws, and regulations. I further solemnly promise that I shall never, during my term as the Grand Master, permit any deviation from the established usages and customs of the order. I further solemnly promise that I will maintain and uphold the dignity of this Grand Lodge, that I will watch over its welfare glory and prosperity, and that I will discharge my duties as the Grand Master with zeal, fidelity and devotion. 
All these points I solemnly promise to observe. So help me God and keep me steadfast in this my great and solemn obligation, being that as the Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of South Africa. As a sign of your fidelity and to render this obligation binding upon your conscience, you will seal it once with your lips on the volume of sacred law. Brethren, you may discharge the sign of reverence. Rise, duly obligated, Grand Master. Brethren all, with the exception of the Grand Master, the, grand, the Regalia Bearer, and the Grand Orator, please resume your seats. Worshipful Grand Master, place yourself in the southeast. Most Worshipful Grand Master, due to the COVID regulations, it is not possible for me to invest you with the regalia of your office. I request you, therefore, to divest yourself of your present regalia. Most Worshipful Grand Master, on behalf of the Brethren of the Grand Lodge of South Africa, who have elected you to this high office, I request you to robe yourself with your badge of office. You will observe that it is made of lambskin, that symbol of purity and innocence which you have worn with so much pride in the many offices that you have filled since your initiation into our ancient and honourable order. It is now embellished with the colours of our Grand Lodge and the distinguishing emblems of the office of the Grand Master. May all your deeds and actions be emblematic of the badge of the Grand Master and may you humbly and with much pride and joy wear this apron. You will now place the ceremonial cuffs on your wrists and the chain and jewel of the Grand Master over your shoulders. Brother Regalia Bearer, I thank you for your assistance. You may now resume your seat.
Most Worshipful Grand Master, I now hand to you your letters patent, which is your written authority, which authorizes you to perform the duties of the Grand Master during your term of office. Thank you most sincerely, Most Worshipful Past Grand Master and Installing Officer. The Brother Grand Sword Bearer and Grand Banner Bearer, please collect the Grand Master Ceremonial Sword and the Grand Lodge Banner and place yourself as is known to you. symbolically present to you the Grand Master's sword. As you will observe, it is no longer used as a weapon in combat. It is now a symbol of the status of the Grand Master. May this sword remind you of that great responsibility entrusted to you to act justly, speak truthfully, remain firm, and treat all the members of this Grand Lodge equally. I likewise present to you the Grand Lodge banner. This symbolizes the union of all of the members of this Grand Lodge. Let it serve to remind you that as Grand Master, it is your responsibility to promote unity and brotherly love amongst all the members. Thank you. Very worshipful Grand Master of Ceremony, you will assemble the escort to conduct the newly obligated Grand Master to the throne. Grand Master and past Grand Master, take up your positions. Grand Sword Bearer and Grand Banner Bearer, take up your positions. Grand Senior Warden, Grand Junior Warden, take up your positions. Brethren, you will stand and adopt the sign of reverence. Most worshipful past Grand Master, the procession has been assembled. Very worshipful Grand Master Ceremony, please proceed.
Brethren, you will turn and face the east. Most Worshipful Brother John Smith, OSM, MSA, I now symbolically install you as the Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of South Africa. Would the Grand Lodge commissioned officers and the senior representatives of the sister constitutions please stretch your right arm at 45 degrees and assist me in producing the benediction to the newly installed Grand Master. May the Father of life, of love and of light endow you with his choicest gifts. May heavenly wisdom illuminate your mind. May heavenly goodness fill and enlarge your heart. May your feet rest upon the rock of justice and from your hands may streams of beneficence continually flow. And round your head bend a circle made splendid by the rays of honor. And late, yea, very late in life, May you be translated from the fading honours of an earthly lodge to the glorious mansions prepared for the faithful in another and better world. So may it be. So Brethren all, resume your seats. The Grand Master of Ceremony. Assemble the escort for the Declaration from the West. Proclamation. Grand Senior Warden, Grand Junior Warden, assemble. Most wishful past Grandmaster, this procession has been assembled. Brethren, the procession will now move to the west. Praise the year met by a home, O my sealed ours rake a stall. So, so long I cliff my psalm, frolic to my hands I lull. In whom what I hence may Altijd groot maken my lief. Brethren, you will stand and adopt the sign of reverence. I now proclaim to the honour and glory of the great architect of the universe, in the name of the Grand Lodge of South Africa, and by virtue of the power vested in me, that most worshipful brother John Evolt Henry Smith, OSM, MSA, has this day been duly installed as the Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of South Africa and will remain as such until such stage as his successor has been elected, obligated and invested and installed. And so may the great architect of the universe bless and prosper this Grand Lodge, the most worshipful Grand Lodge, uh, most worshipful Grand Master the Grand Lodge officers and all the members of this Grand Lodge in all their lawful undertakings. So mote it be. So Very worshipful Grand Master Ceremony, please reassemble the procession. We will now proceed to the east. Does the year some door what the blunder walk for love? We and stuff let near her poor, for dear home we are up her. I bemoan die wat op rug, wandel en sy word en 
Brethren, all be seated. Brother Regalia Bearer, will you please bring the gavel? Most Worshipful Grand Master, as a further emblem of your office, I place in your hand this gavel, which is a symbol of power, but which you should always wield with wisdom, justice, and discretion. Most Worshipful Grand Master, this concludes the ceremony of your installation as the Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of South Africa. This Grand Lodge is now under your command. Most worshipful, right worshipful, very worshipful, worshipful brethren and brethren. I am relieved that this day has finally arrived, <clears throat> and yet I am very humbled by the knowledge that I have been installed into an office which most Freemasons may never have the honor of occupying. We started this year optimistically with our annual Chains Conference. Shortly thereafter, we were locked down and yet we still optimistically proceeded with the election of a new Grand Master. As such elections are based on merit, I was pleased that I must have gained the respect of the members of this Grand Lodge to have been elected unopposed to this office. Notwithstanding our, optimis our optimism, it became apparent that the COVID pandemic would not abate soon. And so in an act of unselfish statesmanship, the immediate past Grand Master, Most Worshipful Brother David Duncan, OSM, retired on the 27th of June 2020, and I took over the control of the Grand Lodge in the role of Acting Grand Master. In terms of our Constitution, all other Grand Lodge officers then became vacant, and so I duly appointed the active senior Grand Lodge officers who immediately assumed their duties and responsibilities as today is the first opportunity to, for us to meet physically. Since such appointments, it will be my honor and privilege to obligate and symbolically invest these grand officers in their respective offices. The aim of this Grand Lodge is to build a multicultural brotherhood of good men who practice brotherly love, charity, and truth, and who are united in the enhancement of wisdom, high moral standards, equality, and justice for all persons. <clears throat> I therefore believe that Freemasonry is even more relevant today than it ever was. And if we are united in a common goal, there is little we cannot achieve. Hier die groot loosie is amper 60 jaar oud. In die leven van enige normale persoon, so hy of sy het in hierdie ouderdom een mate van weisheid en ondervinding opgedoen het. Die Groot Loosie het wel hierdie wijsheid verwerf en ondervinding opgedoen. En daar is meer as 120 Groot Loosies in die wereld, wat ons erken als gevolg van ons vastberadenheid om die beginsels van vrijmesselarij streng na te volg 
en te hand af. <coughs> Ons lede word herinner om die gouwe reel toe te pas, namelijk, doen aan ander, soos jy wil hee, hulle aan jou moet doen. Ons sal dus aan jou streef, na wijsheid, waardigheid en gerechtigheid vir alle personen. Ons geloof ook, dat daar geen persoons leef, wat so verstoken van mag of geleentheid is, dat hij niet veel tot die welzijn van sy medemens kan bijdragen. Ik is dus oortuig, dat als ons hier die basisse beginsels en levenswijze maak, ons die ware vruchten van ons al oude orde niet net sal pluk nie, maar ook ter deur sal geniet. In the long history of the world, only a few generations have been afforded the privilege of being Freemasons. Let us therefore not shrink from the responsibilities which we so voluntarily accepted when we took our obligation as apprentice Freemasons. But let us rather welcome and embrace them and use the energy, the faith and the devotion which we bring to this endeavor to improve the lives of all the persons in our country and indeed in the whole world. I thank the great architect of the universe for sparing me and thereby enabling me to become installed in this office today. And I will continue to pray for the wisdom and the strength to discharge my duties and responsibilities. I thank the past Grand Masters for your assistance and guidance. I particularly thank Most Worshipful Brother Jeffrey Edwards, OSM, who has also been appointed to the very important office of Grand Secretary and all the other brethren who have worked tirelessly to ensure that my installation today is a success and one of which we can be justly proud, particularly under the present circumstances. Brethren, I thank you and your efforts are greatly appreciated. I thank my Deputy Grand Master, my Assistant Grand Masters, the Provincial Grand Masters and the Grand Lodge officers for so enthusiastically accepting your appointments and for immediately seizing the opportunity to discharge your respective duties, long before you were obligated and invested. I am proud and excited at the depth of leadership and character which exists amongst you, and which bodes well for the future of this Grand Lodge. I thank all the other members of the Grand Lodge, and particularly the members of my own Lodge, Lodge de Goede Work, for your continued support and encouragement throughout my Masonic journey, and especially during the past few months. To all the members of the United Grand Lodge of England, the Grand Lodge of Ireland, and the Grand Lodge of Scotland, who practice their Freemasonry in South Africa, I thank you most sincerely for your brotherly love, for your personal friendship, and for your continued support of the Grand Lodge of South Africa. To all the members of the foreign Grand Lodges who we have met through the internet, and with whom we have interacted on a virtual basis during the past months. Thank you for your fraternal acceptance of us and the inclusion in your activities. This regular online interaction which we continue to enjoy has unequivocally shown that we are not only a group of men who may have certain international connections, but that we are truly a worldwide fraternity of which I am proud to be a member. I thank my late father for not only introducing me into Freemasonry, but also for proposing me in my mother lodge, Lodge de Verenigen. I thank my own brother Stephen for not only assisting me today with my installation, <clears throat> but also for your continued support and encouragement. Lastly and most importantly, I thank my wife Edelweiss and my daughter Andrea for your unconditional love, affection, and patience. Thank you also for the many sacrifices you make, which enables me to pursue my interest in Freemasonry. Brethren, we are on the cusp of yet another and unknown year. Few of us could have foreseen the challenges which we have had to deal with when we started this year. As we consider an uncertain future, let us take comfort in the words expressed in the volume of the sacred law, when David instructed Solomon on building the temple at Jerusalem. He said, Be strong and courageous and do the work. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you. 
As far as our future is concerned, the Grand Committee has resolved that we will resume our Masonic labors on the 1st of February 2021, subject, of course, to the terms and strict conditions and protocols which will not only ensure the safety of our member, but also that we do not con contravene any of the COVID regulations. We are further preparing interim rituals to meet these requirements, and we will careful that they do not detract nor compromise our principles or the meaning and solemnity of our ceremonial degree workings. We will also continue with and promote the close and fraternal relationship which we enjoy with all the attended Masonic orders which operate in our country. The feeding scheme which we implemented shortly after the lockdown has been a great success and by the end of this year we would have provided approximately 100,000 meals to orphan children in the poorest of communities. We will continue with similar projects in the new year. Brethren, as we now approach the festive season, let us be mindful of the needs of others, others and let us be a blessing to all persons during this season of joy and thanksgiving. To the brethren who have traveled from all parts of the country to physically attend this installation ceremony today and the banquet this evening, I thank you most sincerely for your sacrifice and your commitment, which is greatly appreciated. I wish you all a very enjoyable sojourn in Cape Town and a safe return to your loved ones. To our Christian members and their families, I wish you all a blessed Christmas. To our Jewish members and their families, I wish you all a very happy Hanukkah. And to all the brethren, I wish you and your families a very happy, prosperous, safe and healthy New Year. Finally, brethren, with a good conscience as our only reward, and with history as the final judge of our deeds, let us continually seek the blessing of the great architect of the universe in all our thoughts, words, and actions. And let us go forth and practice Freemasonry without fear and in the certain knowledge that here on earth, God's work must truly be our own. So may it be. Brethren, it has pleased me to appoint Right Worshipable Brother Brandon Rodney Topham as the Deputy Grand Master. Right Worshipable Brother Topham, I have appointed you as the Deputy Grand Master of this Grand Lodge as you have the required knowledge and experience and I am confident that you will discharge your duties with the same zeal and devotion as you have exhibited in your previous positions. The volume of the sacred law teaches us not to fear, for those who are with us are more than those who may oppose us. And so I look forward to your assistance in governing this Grand Lodge. Right Worshipful Brother Topham, please open your personal volume of the sacred law, place it in your left hand, and place your right hand over it. Please be sta upstanding, brethren, with a sign of reverence. <clears throat> right, Worshipful Brother Topham, you will now recite your obligation. I, Brandon Rodney Topham, in the presence of the great architect <clears throat> of the universe and this Grand Lodge, regularly assembled, do hereby solemnly renew my vows of allegiance to the Grand Lodge and promise to continue to pay due obedience to its constitution, laws, and regulations. I, form, I additionally solemnly promise to never at no time during my term of office as the Deputy Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of South Africa permit any deviation from the established customs and usages of the order. I further solemnly promise to maintain and uphold the dignity of this Grand Lodge, to watch over its welfare, glory and prosperity, and to discharge my duties as Deputy Grand Master with zeal fidelity, and devotion. All these points I solemnly promise to uphold, so help me God and keep me steadfast in this my solemn obligation as the Deputy Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of South Africa. As a pledge of your fidelity, 
and to make this obligation binding on your conscience, you will seal it once with your lips on the volume of the sacred law. Brethren, you are released from standing for the sign of reverence, and please be seated. It is my honor and privilege to receive you as the Deputy Grand Master. Would you please take up a seat in the southeast as is known to you? Right Worshipful Brother Topham, I'm dying to shake your hand and I'm dying to hand over your letters patent like we used to. Sadly, we cannot today. But it is still my honor and privilege and really it is a pleasure for me to hand over your letters patent as the Deputy Grand Master to thank you for accepting this position and to wish you the very best of luck in your new position as the Deputy Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of South Africa. Thank you, Most Worshipful, and thank you for the trust and confidence which you have placed in me by appointing me to this position. I will do my best to not let you down. Thank you. Right Worshipful Deputy Grand Master, please take your seat on my left. Brethren, it has pleased me to appoint the following brethren as Assistant Grand Masters. Right Worshipful Brother Ernest Alfred Bronner. Right Worshipful Brother Avron Ian Jacobson, MSA and Right Worshipful Brother Alan Vivian van der Pfeiffer. Right Worshipful Brethren, would you please take up your positions in front of the altar as is known to you. Right Worshipful Brethren, I have appointed you as Assistant Grand Masters because you have a diversity of capabilities which will benefit this Grand Lodge. I am confident that with your self-control, fixity of purpose and cheerfulness of disposition, you will perform your duties which will be assigned to you to the best of your ability. The volume of the sacred law teaches us that to everything there is a season. Notwithstanding the fact that you have all held this position for some time under the rule of the immediate past Grand Master, this is now a new season, and I know that you will seize this opportunity to expand your knowledge and that you will exercise your ability in assisting me to govern this Grand Lodge. Right Worshipful Brother Bre Brethren, would you please open your personal volumes of the sacred law, hold them in your left hand, and place your right hand over them. Brethren, you will stand with a sign of reverence. Sir verlichte broeder Alfred Bronner, I sal nou u belofte opse. Ek en is Alfred Bronner, in die teenwoordigheid van die opperbouwmeester van Nederland, en hier die bevestig geloosie wetiglik vergader, bevestig weer eens my trouw en groot loosie, en beloof onderdanigheid aan, a, aan, a, aan die grondwette orderwet en die relaties. Ek beloof verder om die waardigheid van groot loosie te aantaf, dat ek oor haar welvaart, haar voorspoed en haar roem sal baag, en dat ek my plichte as assistent grootmeester met eiwer, getrouwheid en doeltreffendheid sal nakom. Al hierdie punte beloof ek plechtig, so help my die opperbouwmeester van die Jalal, hou my standvastig en hier in my plechtige belofte as assistent grootmeester. As a pledge of your fidelity and to make this obligation binding on your conscience, you will seal it once with your lips on the volume of the sacred law. Right Worshipful Brother Jacobson, MSA, you will now recite your obligation. I, Avron Ian Jacobson, in the presence of the great architect of the universe and of this Grand Lodge regularly assembled, hereby solemnly renew my vows of allegiance to the Grand Lodge 
and I solemnly promise that I shall continue to pay due obedience to his constitution, laws, and regulations. I further solemnly promise that I shall never, during my term as office as an assistant Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of South Africa, permit any deviation from the established usages and customs of the order. I further solemnly promise to maintain and uphold the dignity of the Grand Lodge, to watch over its welfare, prosperity, and glory, and to discharge my duties as assistant Grand Master with zeal, fidelity, and devotion. All these points are solemnly promised to maintain and uphold. So help me God and keep me steadfast in this my solemn obligation as an assistant Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of South Africa. As a pledge of your fidelity and to make this obligation binding, you will seal it once with your lips on the volume of the sacred law. Right Worshipful Brother Van der Pfeiffer, you will now recite your obligation. I, Alan Vivian Van der Pfeiffer, in the presence of the great architect of the universe and before this Grand Lodge, regularly assembled, hereby renew my vows of allegiance to the Grand Lodge and promise that I shall continue to pay due obedience to its constitution, laws and regulations. I further solemnly promise that I shall never during my term of office as Assistant Grand Master, permit any deviation from the reg regular orders of the institution. I further solemnly promise that I shall uphold and maintain the dignity of the Grand Lodge, watch over its welfare, prosperity and glory, and discharge my duties as Assistant Grand Master with zeal, fidelity and devotion. All these points I solemnly promise, so help me God and keep me steadfast in this my solemn obligation as Assistant Grand Master. Right, Worship Father Favour, as a pledge of your fidelity and to render this obligation binding on your conscience, you will seal it once with your lips on the volume of the sacred law. Brethren, you are released from standing with a sign of reverence and you may resume your seats. Sehr verlichte Brüder Alfred Bronner, baie dankie dat u die amp as assistent grootmeester aanvaar het. Ons het goed saam gewerk toe ek nog die adjunct was en ek het geen vertrouwe dat ek en u en al die ander grootloosie Amstraars baie goed gaan werk in hierdie nieuwe termijn. Baie dankie vir die plugsgetrouwheid, baie dankie vir die hulp, baie dankie vir die vriendskap. En dit is my nou een groot plezier om hier die machtigingsbrief aan die oor te handig en ek vraag verskoning dat ek nie die hand een goeie handdruk kan gee nie. Maar baie dankie. Dankie hoog heren waarde grootmeester, is een erg groot voorrecht om, om weer hierdie post te kampadeer saam met u en ek beloof om my beste te doen in die termijn waar ek is en groot lusie nie te leer te stel nie. Dankie daarvoor. Baie dankie. <coughs> Right Worshipful Brother Avron Jacobson, MSA. What can I say? We have worked well together over many years. I remember appointing you, I think, as, the, as in a Provincial Grand Master of Ceremonies, when I was Provincial Grand Master. And then you followed me into that position, and it wasn't long before you were appointed as an Assistant Grand Master. And we also have worked well together. And I want to thank you personally for all the effort that you have put in to making this installation a success. I know the hard work that's gone in behind the scenes and I'm not going to embarrass you now by, ex by exposing you. But I do want to thank you and I do want to congratulate you <clears throat> and to you too. It is my greatest desire to shake your hand, but sadly I can't and so I only present you with your letters patent as an assistant Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of South Africa. Thank you, uh, Most Wishful Brother John Smith, Grandmaster. It is indeed a pleasure to um, serve under your 
uh, rule. I've done it before and I'm pleased to do it again. Uh, you can, I can assure you of my utmost support and you can rely upon me at any time. And maybe let me also take this opportunity in congratulating you in your appointment as a Grand Master. Thank you. Thank you. Right, Worshipful Brother Father Pfeiffer, the first time I laid my eyes on you was you were a provincial Grand Master of ceremonies at an installation in Durban. And I remember leaning over to the then Grand Master and I said, who's that young chap? He's doing not a bad job. And then very shortly after that, you were, of course, appointed as Provincial Grand Master of the Northern Division. And you did a fantastic job there. And it wasn't long after that that you were appointed as an Assistant Grand Master under the rule of the previous or the immediate past Grand Master. And I want to thank you for all the work that you have done for Grand Lodge. And I want to thank you for accepting this position. And I have no doubt that you and I will work very well together and that we will take this Grand Lodge from strength to strength. It is my honor and privilege to present these letters patent to you, and I also apologize for not being able to shake your hand in this regard. Most versatile Grand Master, may I be, I think, the second to congratulate you on this well-deserved election and installation as Grand Master. Um, we have worked fantastically well together, and I look so forward to working under your guidance, and I give you my full and undivided loyalty and commitment to ensuring that this Grand Lodge works well. Thank, Thank you, you most sincerely. Thank you. Right, Worshipful Assistant Grand Masters, please take up your seats in the east on my right. Brethren, it has pleased me to appoint the following brethren as the Provincial Grand Masters of our provinces. <clears throat> for the Southern Division, Right Worshipful Brother Thomas William Hardiman. For the Northern Division, Right Worshipful Brother Godfrey Stewart Place. For the Central Division, Right Worshipful Brother Franz Johannes Oppegrein. For the Eastern Division, Right Worshipful Brother Basil Jonathan de Kock. And for the Eastern Cape Division, Right Worshipful Brother Keith John Hutton. Brethren, would you please take up your positions in front of the altar as is known to you. Right Worshipful Provincial Grand Masters, you are the line managers of your divisions which form the very backbone of this Grand Lodge. As I occupied your position some 12 years ago, I am well aware of the fact that your task is an onerous one and that you are required to practice courtesy, patience, humility, firmness, empathy, fairness, understanding, piety and generosity at all times and often at the same time. You are further responsible for each and every member of your respective divisions. And as you have all occupied this position for some time, you have all been exposed to both success and certain tribulation. The volume of the sacred law teaches us not to fear tribulation, for it produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character, and character produces hope. I had no hesitation in reappointing all of you to this very important office, and I am confident that your further terms as Provincial Grand Masters will be fruitful and will prepare you for even greater responsibilities in the future. Right Worshipful bre uh, Brethren, please open your personal volumes of the sacred law, place them in your left hands, and place your right hands over them. <clears throat> Brethren, you will stand with a sign of reverence.
Provincial Grand Masters Designate, you will now individually state your full names and thereafter recite your obligation. I, Thomas William Hardiman. I, Godfrey Stewart Place. I, Franz Johannes Oppelgren. I, Keith John Hutton, in the presence of the great architect of the universe and before this Grand Lodge, do solemnly promise to uphold the duties of Grand Lodge to look over its two fulfill its, to obey its constitution laws as regulations, and to also solemnly promise that I will never during my term of office, the provincial grand master permit, permit any deviation from the established usages or customs of our order. I further solemnly promise that I will maintain and uphold its, its duty, and promise that I will sincerely watch over its welfare, prosperity and glory and discharge my duties as Provincial Grand Master with zeal, fidelity and devotion. All these points I solemnly swear to uphold, so help me God, and keep me steadfast in this my solemn obligation as Provincial Grand Master, Eastern Cape Division. As the Provincial Grand Master of the Central Division. Of the Southern Division. Of the Northern Division. Brethren, as a pledge of your fidelity and to make this obligation binding on all your consciences, I request you to seal it once with your lips on the volume of the sacred law. Brethren, please, you are, you are released from standing with a sign of reverence, and all other brethren, please resume your seats. <clears throat> Right Worshipful Provincial Grand Masters, I receive you, and would you please hand your Bibles to the Grand Orator and take up your positions in the southeast. Right Worshipful Brother Thomas, Tommy Hardiman, what an honor and a privilege, privilege for me <coughs> to be able to present these letters patent to you. Thank you most sincerely for accepting this position. I know that you have been in this job for some time. And all I can say to you is that you have done such a good job and you've performed so well that you have booked yourself for another few years. You are, I have also appointed you as the chairman of the ritual committee of the Grand Lodge. And it has not escaped any of the members of the Grand Lodge that you are one of the grand ritualists of this Grand Lodge. And in my address this morning, you heard me inform the brethren of this Grand Lodge, and indeed the world, that we are preparing rituals that will meet the present health requirements and yet not detract from or compromise our principles. And I look forward to receiving those rituals. I was going to say by Monday morning, but let's, let's have it by the end of the year. It's really a pleasure and honor for me to be able to present these letters patent to you. And I thank you most sincerely for accepting this position. And I wish you well in your position as Provincial Grand Lodge of the Southern Division. Thank you, Most Worshipful the Grand Master. And it's a pleasure to be able to use that in front of your name now officially. Most Worshipful. Thank you. Right Worshipful Brother Godfrey Place, firstly thank you for getting up very early this morning and travelling from Johannesburg. Um, I was rather worried when we were going to start a bit earlier this morning and you hadn't arrived yet, but then I was told that you were breaking all land speed records to get here from the airport, but thank you very much indeed. You are the chairman of the Constitutional Committee of our Grand Lodge. And I have no doubt that with your skill and ability that you will keep me and the other members of this Grand Lodge on the straight and narrow. 
I know that you have, in the very short time that you have been Provincial Grand Master of the Northern Division, already worked wonders. And I look forward to working with you, and I look forward to you growing the Northern Division to the many hundreds of members that we used to have. Thank you very much for accepting this position, and to you too, it is my honour and privilege to present these letters patent to you. Most Worshipful Grand Master, um, times like this and so on, words are sort of ineffective in terms of expectations that are placed on our shoulders. Um, may I also wish you all the best in your reign now as our Grand Master, and I'm hoping that with the assistance of my assistant provincial Grand Masters and so on, we will not let you down and you'll see the Northern Division grow to those heights which you so seek. Indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir verlichte broeder Frans Johannes Alpegrein, het is altijd plezier om een oproep van u te kry, want u toets my altijd. Ek dink nie daar is een keer wat u nie vir my vraag um, oor iets op in die rituaal of in die grondwet nie. En ek is, ek is baie blij dat u so plichtsgetrouw is en vastberadend is in die positie. Dit is vir my eer en voorig om hier die machtigingsbrief aan u oor te handig en aan u ook en aan al die broeders. Dit is vir my rarige verleentheid om nie die hand te kan druk nie. Baie geluk en baie dankie dat u die, die, die uh, amp aan, aanvaar het. Baie dankie oog jy waarde die grootmeester is my eer en voorig om u die van u hand te ontvang. En met plezier en met liefde en met trots sal ek die centrale afdeling uh, onder u leiding sal ons u leid en u trots maak. Baie dankie daarvoor. Right Worshipful Brother Keith John Hutton, what a pleasure to see you today all the way from Port Elizabeth, particularly after the President announced a further restrictions in your province, and also what a pleasure to have you as a fellow member of Lodge de Feenigen. Thank you most sincerely for everything that you have done in the Eastern Cape Division. You have worked wonders in the short time that you have been Provincial Grand Master, and I look forward to your further term of office. And to you also, it is my honour and privilege to present these letters patent to you as the Provincial Grand Master of the Eastern Cape Division. Thank you, Grand Master. Most wishful the Grand Master, I offer and pledge our full support in the Eastern Cape. I hope I can honour and hopefully secure your confidence that you've shown in me over the last few or four Four years, actually, I've been here, and you've been my mentor, my support, and my strong right arm. And I thank you for that. Thank you very much indeed. <coughs> right, Worshipful Provincial Grand Masters, would you please take up your seats on my left? Brethren, it has pleased me to appoint the following brethren as active Grand Lodge officers. Brethren will stand as I read out your names. We are well aware of the fact that many brethren could not be here as a result of the COVID restrictions. <coughs> as Grand Senior Warden, Right Worshipful Brother Johan Britz. Grand Senior Warden, Right Worshipful Brother Ronald Smith. Grand Junior Warden, Right Worshipful Brother Jacques Marcantonis. Grand Junior Warden, Right Worshipful Brother John Miller. Grand Orator, Very Worshipful Brother Rex Ingle. Grand Orator, Very Worshipful Brother Leonard Kingsley. Grand Orator, Very Worshipful Brother Colin Montgomery. Grand Master of Ceremony, Very Worshipful Brother Frederick Mayron. Grand Master of Ceremony, Very Worshipful Brother Louis van der Linde. Grand Master of Ceremony, Very Worshipful Brother Martin Kotzer. Assistant Grand Master of Ceremony, Worshipful Brother Clive Daniels. Assistant Grand Master of Ceremony, Worshipful Brother Mark Hiles. 
Grand First Preparator, Worship Brother Evangelist Dukas. Grand First Preparator, Worship Brother Rodney Schreder. Grand Second Preparator, Worship Brother Machiel Britz. Grand Almoner, Worship Brother Andre Hermesheis. Grand Ambassador, Worship of Brother Darby van Royen. Grand Ambassador, Worship of Brother Demos Marcantonis. Grand Inspector, Worship of Brother Ini Akpan. Grand Banner Bearer, Worship of Brother Andre Boertus. Grand Inner Guard, Worship of Brother Michael Birchall. Grand Inner Guard, Worship of Brother Hannes Jonker. <coughs> Grand Lodge Officers, please assemble in front of the altar as is known to you. Grand Lodge Officers, I thank you for accepting the appointment to your respective officers. I have appointed you to these officers on merit, and I believe that each and every one of you. We have much work to do, and I look forward to your assistance in governing this Grand Lodge, and so to continue spreading the influence of Freemasonry throughout this country, and thereby ensure that the Grand Lodge of South Africa becomes a household name. Brethren, as no man tires of receiving benefits, never ever tire of receiving any benefits through the very act of first conferring such benefits upon others. Grand Lodge officers, please open your personal volumes of the sacred law, place them in your left hand, and place your right hands over it. Right Worshipful Deputy Grand Master, will you please attend to the obligation of the Grand Lodge officers? Brethren, please stand with a sign of reverence. Grand Lodge officers, to each one of you, solemnly promise to maintain and uphold the dignity of this Grand Lodge, to watch over its welfare, its glory and prosperity, and to discharge the duties of the office to which you have respectively been appointed. What is your individual answer? This I solemnly promise. To seal this uh, pledge uh, with a pledge of fidelity, I request you to seal this obligation once with your lips on the volume of your sacred law. I receive you, duly obligated to Grand Lodge officers. Brethren, all with the exception of the Grand Lodge officers, please be seated. Grand Lodge officers, please resume your seats. Brethren, on the first signal, you will salute the Grand Master with a court bow, and on the second signal, you will be seated. Most worshipful past Grand Master, most worshipful brother Jeffrey Edwards, OSM, I have thanked you on the floor but let me thank you personally for everything that you have done during the past months, not only in your position as Grand Secretary, but also in your position as the installing officer today. I remember when you were Provincial Grand Master and you used to conduct installation ceremonies. You have come a long way and there's many, many years since that, but you haven't lost your touch. And perhaps, Perhaps I can use you also as an installing officer in the future. <laughs> but thank you most sincerely for all your time and your trouble and behind the scenes work that I know has gone into making today a success. And I do know as well that at the banquet this evening you have further work to do. So in anticipation for that, let me thank you for that as well. Thank you most sincerely. Most Worshipful Grand Master, and I must admit I thoroughly enjoy being able to say that. I thank you for that, for your kind words. Um, working with you has been 
extremely interesting and stimulating, and we've both been trying to get to the same place, and I'm delighted that we have now got there. Sincere best wishes for the term ahead. I have no doubt it will be a very successful one, and I thank you. Brethren, this now comes to the end of the installation ceremony. And to you all, I thank you most sincerely for your attendance here today and for all the effort that you have put in. And those of you that we will see tonight, I will have further words of praise to address to you. So thank you. Most worshipful Grand Master, I bring you fraternal greetings from the most worshipful the Grand Lodge of Ireland, and congratulations on your election and installation as the most worshipful Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of South Africa. We from Ireland have known each other quite a bit uh, over the last number of years, and we wish you very well. We are personally acquainted, and when we met earlier this year in Cape Town in January and February, uh, I know that we are, have had a good relationship and will continue to do so. I know you are well acquainted with Ireland and you are known to one of our charity visitors quite well. And I have been asked to give you their fraternal greetings and congratulations uh, on your uh, election. I have no doubt that the excellent relationship between the Grand Lodge of South Africa and the Grand Lodge of Ireland will continue and to prosper in, under your uh, guidance. And I want to congratulate everybody involved today in your installation because of the dignity with which it has been conducted. It really has been a wonderful ceremony and I thank you most kindly and I wish you well and for the best wishes for the season and for the coming year, hopefully, now that we have heard about a vaccination, that it will be virus free. Congratulations and thank you. Most worshipful Brother Gray, Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Ireland, thank you most sincerely for attending my installation ceremony and also for your very kind words, which are much appreciated. I did suddenly enjoy our brief interaction when you did visit Cape Town early in the year. I happen to know that many of your members are practicing their golf. And in fact, I've been out on the golf course as well in anticipation perhaps of your next visit. And I certainly look forward to spending more time with you, hopefully not in the dis too distant future. May I also wish you and your loved one a very happy and healthy festive season and a new year. Thank you so much for taking the time and the trouble to be with us today. Most washable Grand Master, may I, on behalf of the Brethren of the Grand Lodge of Scotland, congratulate you and your installation as Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of South Africa. May you and your officers enjoy good health and find great enjoyment and fulfillment in your new offices. I look forward to personally working with you in the years ahead and that my district Grand Master, Brother Jim Kerr, will continue to strengthen the bonds that exist between our two Grand Lodges. May you, sir, and all your brethren and their families enjoy a very happy Christmas, and may 2021 bring you all good health and happiness in abundance. Thank you so much for your invitation to join you today it's been a marvellous occasion, and we thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you, sir. Brother McGee, most worshipful Grand Master Mason of the Grand Lodge of Scotland, thank you too most sincerely for attending my installation ceremony, and also for your very, very kind words, which are much appreciated. As I am an honorary member of Lodge Southern Cross, which is one of your lodges in Cape Town, I receive your regular correspondence to your members, which I much enjoy. May I congratulate you on the steady increase of the members on your Grand Lodge's Facebook page and the fantastic 
charitable contributions which you have received from your lodges, particularly during this pandemic. We have also met the curator of your Grand Lodge, Brother Cooper, via Zoom, and I have attended several of his lectures, all of which have been thoroughly enjoyable. I do know Brother Kerr, and I look forward to seeing him this year in Johannesburg. May I wish you and your loved ones also a very happy, healthy, festive season and a new year. Thank you very much indeed. Britain, at this point, I would um, like to have welcomed um, most worship brother Bill Sardone, the Grand Master of New York. Um, but most worship brother Sardone did warn us in advance that he had a, a Christmas function which had to be attended to. And I see he's, he was forced to be a few minutes uh, ago. But nonetheless, um, our new Grand Master would like to thank him and his Grand Lodge for their participation. Most Worship Brother Sardone, I know that you have left your computer on and that you are recording this message, and that's why I'm very happy to reply there too. Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of New York, thank you also most sincerely for attending my installation ceremony and also for the very kind words that you have left in your message which I much appreciate. We have in fact met over the International Masonic Town Halls. I think we're now moving into the ninth one. And I have thoroughly enjoyed your positive and forthright approach to what seems to be common challenges facing most, if not all Grand Lodges. I do hope that the COVID pandemic permits you and your Grand Lodge to hold your annual meeting during May next year. And I also wish you and your loved ones a very happy and healthy festive season and new year. Thank you very much indeed for attending. And I'm sorry that it ran slightly over the appointed time, but thank you. Most worshipful brother, Grandmaster John Smith, OSM MSA. I bring you fraternal greetings from the Grand Lodge of Vermont. I symbolically extend to you the grip of brotherhood and wish you Godspeed in all your endeavors for our gentle craft. Congratulations once more. I thoroughly enjoyed your installation ceremony. It was very nice to watch. And I wish you and your family and all the brothers of your Grand Lodge jurisdiction best wishes for a healthy and happy new year. Most wishful brother Corso, Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of, new of Vermont. Thank you also most sincerely for attending my installation ceremony and also for those very, very kind words, which are much appreciated. I understand that the weather is changing in your part of the, part of the world and that you can expect a white Christmas. In South Africa, of course, we have a summer season. And so December's are pretty warm, particularly down in Cape Town. And we are expecting an influx even notwithstanding the COVID regulations and influx of visitors to our beaches. But may I also wish you and your loved ones a very happy and a healthy festive season and a very happy new year. And I look forward to seeing you possibly on the night of, on the last um, International Masonic Town Hall, which I think is next week. But thank you most sincerely, most worshipful brother Corso. I'd like to bring greetings from most worshipful Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons in the state of Michigan. And I want to say congratulations to most worshipful Grand Master John Smith and his officers today. Uh, my deputy, Larry Inchel, is also online, and he wishes you the same along with all the officers of the state of Michigan. It's snowing here today, and we're going to have a white Christmas, but I just would extend a fraternal hand of friendship to the Grand Lodge of South Africa. And thank you for having us today, worshipful sir. Thank you. Most worshipful brother, my Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Michigan, thank you most sincerely for not only attending my installation ceremony, but also for those very, very kind and encouraging words. As I mentioned to most worshipful brother Corso, we can only hope for, for snow in the winter, but we will have a very nice warm Christmas. 
<laughs> I understand, of course, that, that your state is very well known for its fishing. Perhaps you can't do much fishing now in the winter, but I meet a past Grand Master, Most Worshipful Brother David Duncan, OSM, is a very keen fisherman. And perhaps during my term of office, if I'm so fortunate to be able to visit you, I will bring him along and perhaps he can catch some fish. But That'd thank you one. most for, for your very kind words and thank you for your presence. And may I also wish you and your loved ones a very happy and a very healthy festive season and a new year. Thank you so much. Most worshipful Grand Master, I bring you greetings from the Brethren of the Grand Lodge of California. One of the advantages of this virtual environment is the opportunity to see installations like this in countries where we normally don't get to travel. You had a beautiful installation today and I am most appreciative of the opportunity to be able to see you installed. Congratulations and please enjoy a healthy and safe holiday season. Thank you. Most worshipful Brother Vice, Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of California. To you too, thank you most sincerely for attending my installation ceremony. It was a bit long, but I hope you enjoyed it and also for your very kind words, which are much appreciated. Although I have had not had the pleasure of visiting your state, I, like many, many youngsters across the world, were introduced to California through the Beach Boys when their song, California Girl, became an international hit. I certainly look forward to coming to America and to seeing as many of the Grand Lodges as I can. But until I do that, may I wish you and your Grand Lodge officers and all your members a very happy and a healthy festive season and a new year. And thank you so much indeed. Most worshipful Brother Smith, I've had the pleasure of meeting you on our International Masonic Town Halls, and it's truly a pleasure for me to be here today. On behalf of all the officers and brethren of the Grand Lodge of Quebec, I'd like to wish uh, you a sincere, or extend sincere congratula congratulations to you and your officers on your installation. Uh, I'd also like to thank Most Worshipful Brother Edwards and his installation team on the most beautiful and well-executed ceremony. And uh, I'd like to say, uh, wish you that the, the great architect of the universe give you the wisdom, strength, and health to conduct or write your duties during the, your term of office. Ekmenzi and Brua, the best to fear the vacancy. Most worship, Brother David, Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of, Qu of Quebec. Thank you also most sincerely for not only attending my installation ceremony, but for those very kind words and particularly the last part, which I'm sure I'm going to find an interpreter to tell me exactly what you said. I happen to notice that, of course, your Grand Lodge, like all the others that I've just dealt with, are far older and more senior than we are. But notwithstanding that, we as a relatively long, young Grand Lodge, now only 60 years old, are trying to do the best we can and to try and emulate the senior Grand Lodges. And I certainly thank you and all the other brethren for the time and the trouble that you have taken today to attend my installation ceremony. And allow me, please, to wish you and all the members of your Grand Lodge a very happy and a very healthy festive season and a new year. And thank you so much for attending. Most worshipful brother John Smith, can you hear me okay? Thank you, I can. I want to bring greetings and congratulations from the brethren of the Grand Lodge of Manitoba in Canada. We are, uh, you and I have met through the international, and your brethren from South Africa have met through the international Tower Hall meetings. And when my installation came up at, um, in June and we were being shut down and couldn't do it live, we had, I think we were one of the first to attempt to do a Zoom installation. And I was so thrilled and, uh, excited that you're the brethren of the Grand Lodge of South Africa joined me for my installation. Uh, I have found that I, I, I'm honored by the relationship that we've built in the friendship and fraternity that we have got to this that would never have happened to the, uh, this opportunity. And um, I want to commend you and uh, most of all, Edwards and your installation team for the excellent work that you have done today. Uh, you conducted the ceremony with honor, grace and dignity 
and it was your building is beautiful. It was wonderful to watch. And being a former grand organist, I was thrilled that there was that much music in the ceremony. It made me very happy. Um, I look forward to the day when I can, you, you are certainly welcome to attend Manitoba anytime. But I look forward to coming over to uh, be able to shake your hand in person and your other brethren of the Grand Lodge of South Africa, especially this month, because we do have white, we have a snow Christmas, but our, our temperature I woke up to this morning was minus 10 Celsius. And I would rather be on a beach in South Africa at this point in time. So it's been a pleasure. I, I know you will um, you will uh, charge your duties with honor and respect. And I look forward to uh, keeping this fraternal relationship going, which would never have occurred as a result of uh, COVID hadn't happened. So that's one of the positive outcomes that I see from, from this, uh, this situation. Congratulations. Most wishful brother Fado, Grand Master of the Grand Lodge in Manitoba. You're absolutely correct. It was a pleasure and a privilege for us to attend your installation. And I am so pleased that you were able to attend mine. Thank you also most sincerely for those very kind words. We tried our best and, you know, I don't think we did too badly. And I also to wish you and all your a very happy and healthy festive season and a new And if you Come to South Africa next year. Make sure that you us and make sure you come and visit us in Cape Town. Thank you most dearly, most worshipful brother. Grand Master, I bring you a fraternal greetings from the brethren of the Grand Lodge of Victoria, your Southern Hemisphere colleague. We are, however, in nine hours ahead, so it's about 3.30 in the morning here. And it's a bit on the cool side, just like I guess it is in Winnipeg. It's only going to be 29 degrees Celsius today. Oh. Well, somehow we'll manage. I was, I found, I found uh, today's ceremony absolutely fascinating from a number of aspects, and I won't dwell on them with any time. But firstly, the uh, you're not only a multicultural country, but also your Grand Lodge is multilingual, and uh, that's the first thing one appreciates. I was installed under similar circumstances in June this year, and it was live stream. And uh, I, you know, I guess we had the courage to do it, and so have you. Uh, the number of brethren who were able to attend uh, the installation by virtual means were far outstripped of that in previous years. So we're actually considering perhaps uh, making every grad installation uh, available virtually to all the brethren in Victoria. I was particularly impressed with particularly impressed with your address. It was inspirational. Uh, you referred to, I guess, life, life, Masonic life in future not being the same. And who would have 12 months ago predicted that we'd be meeting hundreds of brethren every week? Through Zoom meetings, that we'd be, we'd be meeting internationally. So thank you for the invitation to be here. It's been a privilege, and I'd like to extend to you, to your grand officers, and to your brethren all the very best for Christmas, Hanukkah, uh, and the new year. And I trust that your grand lord prospers under your rule. Thank you. Most worshipful brother Elkington, Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Victoria. Thank you so much. I, I know it's very early for you in the morning. And, and goodness gracious, what, what a privilege to have someone from Australia joining us. Thank you most sincerely. We, of course, have many South Africans now living in Australia. And I personally have quite a few friends. And everything they can tell me, and in fact, I have two or three that live in the state of Victoria. And they tell me it's a wonderful time. But thank you very much indeed for attending this installation. Dear brothers, Paul, it's a pleasure to have had the opportunity to be witness of the installation of my dear, most worshipful brother, John Smith, O-S-M-M-S-A. Grandmaster of the Grand Lodge of South Africa, and have the opportunity to express 
the wish that our grand lodges strengthen the fraternal relations that have been formalized since September. We are encouraged by the fundamental motto of masonry, freedom, equality, and fraternity. Acting within the regularity, we will walk the path of life that emanates from our principles. On behalf of the Baja California Grand Lodge in Mexico, I wish you a successful period led by John Smith. Long live to the Grand Lodge of South Africa. Thanks. Most worshipful brother Wilful, Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Mexico, Baja California. My word, what an honor and a privilege to have you attend my installation ceremony. And thank you so much for those very, very kind words, which I can assure you are very, very much appreciated. I didn't know much about your country, and when the secretary informed me that you would be attending, I resorted to now the Google Express. And I was more impressed to read about the history of your country and in fact about your Grand Lodge. And I thank you most sincerely for the time and the effort that you have taken to attend this installation ceremony. And may I wish you as well and your brethren and your loved ones a very, very happy and a healthy festive season and a new year. And I thank you sincerely for attending this installation. Thank you, most worshipful Brother Wolfer. Brethren, it is now my privilege to call upon Right Worshipful Brother Pierre Ngoa Obiang, the Deputy Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Gabon. Bonjour, bonjour. Uh, respectable Grand Maître. Le Grand Maître de la Grand Lodge de Gabon, Ali Bongo Ndiba, m'a désigné pour le représentant. Grand Master, the Right Worshipful is bringing uh, greetings from his Grand Lodge, and he said that he is very appreciative to have the opportunity to, to participate in, in your installation. And he is very happy and wish you all the very best. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Right Worshipful Brother Obiong, Deputy Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Gabon. Thank you most sincerely for attending my installation ceremony and thank you for those kind words and best wishes for the new year. Our Grand Lodges have, over the past 15 or more years, become firm friends and true Masonic brothers. I was very sad to hear this last week of the passing of Right Worshipful Brother Ivindi, an assistant Grand Master in your Grand Lodge. And I would like you to convey my sincere condolences to your Grand Master and to all the brethren on the passing of this fine Freemason. We will celebrate his life and we will treasure his memory. And may I also wish you, your Grand Lodge and your loved ones, a very happy and a very safe festive season and a new year. I thank you. Most worshipful Grand Master, Dear Sir and Brother John Smith, on behalf of all members of the National Grand Lodge of Greece, please allow me to congratulate you for your installation as most worshipful Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of South Africa. For me especially, it's a pleasure and an honor being present in the installation ceremony, which unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 restrictions, takes place through teleconference. The relationship between our two Grand Lodges is strong and profound. I hope that in the near future, we will be able to meet in Johannesburg or in Athens. In the past, distinguished brethren of your Grand Lodge had the opportunity to visit us, as well as our members have visited your Grand Lodge. 
as far as I noticed, you have in uh, uh, with, uh, among your grand officers two Greek oriented uh, brethren, uh, brother Evangelos Lucas and uh, Dimos Mark Antonis. We're living in the middle of a nightmare. Humanity is an, an, is an unorthodox and intense war. Freemasonry needs to show the way of how we can overcome this, this difficult situation. What we need to have now is hope and responsibility. Hope for a better tomorrow and responsibility governing our actions. I'm sure that once again, we will overcome successfully this awful situation. Grandmaster, most worshipful Grandmaster, once again, I congratulate you for the installation. I wish you a healthy and prosperous period in your office. And finally, to be able to meet out of social distancing restrictions the soonest possible. Best wishes for Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Thank you very much and stay safe. Most worshipful brother, Deligeros, Grand Master of the National Grand Lodge of Greece. Thank you as well, most sincerely for attending my installation ceremony and also for your very kind and very wise words, which are very much appreciated. I was first introduced to your Grand Lodge when I met a past Grand Master now, most worshipful brother Contessa, some 12 years ago. And he became a regular visitor to our Grand Lodge. And over the next few years, in fact, your Grand Lodge was represented in 2011 at our Golden Jubilee by the then Grand Master, most worshipful brother Mamas. So we have become firm friends. And you're quite right. I had to include at least three Greek brethren in my grand offices. They keep me on my toes, I can assure you. Thank you so much indeed for your very kind words. Thank you so much indeed for your friendship. And may I also wish you, your officers and your loved ones, a very, very blessed Christmas and a very happy new year. I thank you. Most worshipful Grandmaster, most worshipful brother John Smith, please accept in the name of our most worshipful Grandmaster, most worshipful Christian Razafindakut, and the Grand Officer, as well as the Brethren and the Grand Lodge of Madagascar, our warm and fraternal greeting and our heartfelt congratulations on the occasion of your installation as Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of South Africa. Even if, if, if fortunately, we can't be together because of COVID-19, yet there are many reasons why you are need to be together due to the assistance of technology. Most worshipful, it is our wish that the elements are in our favor next year. We shall be able to meet in the real life in this endeavor to strengthen our bondage and our sense of belonging to a one and unique fraternity. Most worshipful, I wish you well and I say this opportunity to great all Britain of the Grand Lodge of South Africa. Thank you. Right, worshipful brother Dominique, Deputy Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Madagascar. To you too, my brother. Thank you most sincerely for attending my installation ceremony and also for those very, very kind words of encouragement and love. Although I have not had the pleasure of meeting or in visiting your Grand Lodge or even your country, I know much about it because through my interaction with brother Nuno Calve, who is a member of your Grand Lodge and in fact a past Grand Warden of the Grand Lodge of South Africa, I feel that I know you and I know your country. As our countries are neighbors and not as far removed as some of the other most worshipful Grand Masters who we've seen today, I'm sure that we will soon meet and I look forward to that. May I wish you, your Grand Master, their loved ones and all your officers, a very, very happy and a very safe festive season and a new year. And I thank you once again for your attendance. Thank you.
Most uh, worshipful Grandmaster, it's my privilege as Grand Chancellor to represent the Grand Lodge of Mauritius. I'm sincerely pleased and deeply honored to come here to you and to all the brethren present this afternoon, the warmest fraternal greetings and congratulations from the most worshipful Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Mauritius, the most worshipful brother, Bruno Jumazel. As we experience these trying times in the actual context of the COVID-19 and the travel ban between our two countries, it's uh, spiritually uplifting to be sharing these great moments with you via Zoom. This determination becomes even more apparent than brotherhood in the mainstay of our fraternity. On behalf of the Most Worshipful Grand Master Bruno Jumazel and all the brethren of the Grand Lodge of Mauritius, I'd like to extend our deep congratulations to you, Most Worshipful Grand Master, for being selected to conduct the affairs of the Grand Lodge of South Africa. Both Grand Lodges have shared common fraternal goals through the years, and we at the Grand Lodge of Mauritius have learned much from you. May the bond of brotherhood between our two lodges become more and more cemented, where brotherly love, morality, friendship, peace, and harmony subsist. We wish you plenty of success in all your Masonic undertakings. Thank you most heartedly for giving me the opportunity to assist at this wonderful installation ceremony. Most worshipful Grand Master, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you, your family and brethren, I have said. Right, worship Brother Lefebvre, the Grand Chancellor of the Grand Lodge of Mauritius. To you as well, my brother, thank you most sincerely for attending my installation ceremony and also for your very, very kind words. I have had the pleasure of meeting your most grand, uh, your, your most worshipful Grand Master, and I would like to ask you to please convey my personal thanks to, 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 to him to allow you to attend this ceremony and also extend my sincere wishes for a very happy festive season and a very happy new year to him as well. You would have noticed, my brother, on the volume of the sacred law on which I took my obligation, there was a very beautiful set of a square and a compass. And if you didn't know, then I'm telling you now that that was a gift from your Grand Lodge, which I received from Right Worshipful Brother Bernard Newhouse, one of your assistant Grand Masters. Oh, yeah. And I wish to thank your Grand Master for allowing him to give me that gift on your behalf. And to you too, my brother, I wish you and your loved ones a very, very blessed Christmas, a very happy festive season, and a very happy and safe new year. And I thank you once again for your attendance here today. Thank you. Thank, thank you most much for your God, Master. Thank you most sincerely, brethren. And I wish you all well, and I trust that we will all meet in the very near future. May you all... Enjoy your festive season, and may you all remain safe in the new year. I thank you, brother.